guys. Today I'm going to be using a vintage flat sheet, my push pins, and the dress form you see behind me instead of a pattern. I'm going to teach you how to drape a Georgian era dress. Think Pride and Prejudice. So with cotton, you want to pre-wash and dry to prevent shrinkage. But another tip for you is that they don't always print on grain. So to ensure this, I cut down about four inches down and a half an inch in. I just make a little slice and then I rip it. You can only do this on cotton and it, it ensures that your fabric will hang straight and that you're printed on grain. Um, this one luckily was printed on grain so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm gonna be using princess lines. They're the little black lines on my dress form that you can see they run horizontal, I mean vertical, from my shoulders through my bust point down to my thighs. This is the most flattering uh, lines in a pattern, so I tend to favor this. So I cut a six inch strip horizontal and I'm using double the amount between the breast points to gather. So I'm just using my pins and I, I am eyeballing the gathering. But if you wanna be a little bit more calculated about this, I would use a fourth of an inch uh, between each pin as you go. Now I'm gonna be using a gathering stitch later so I'm not really worried about it. I just kind of want to get a feel for what the dress is going to look like in the end. So once you have the gathering finished, you're going to use the same six inch strip and you're going to start making two side and back pieces. Now, you either have to have darts or absorb those darts in the seams. So in the front, I'm absorbing, I'm absorbing those and in the back I'm doing darts. I don't show pinning the darts here but I do sew them in later. So you can kind of see me absorbing it right there. I push it flat. You don't want any gaping material on your dress form. So I also fold under the seam allowances because this is my pattern. I fold them under and sometimes I'll go through with an iron and, and like steam them so that when I pull them off I know exactly where my seam allowances should be and it's really easy to match stuff up. Okay, so I also cut um, a strip, six inch strip, uh, vertically, and I'm making the straps. I folded it over four times in the front to make it thin, and I unfolded it just to make it wide in the back. So I placed them on the outside of the princess lines. So underneath it should be flat fabric, not gathered. Um, a lot of Georgian dresses have that angled look in the back and I really wanted to use that for this pattern. Okay, so I'm using the rest of the sheet to create the skirt and I start back center and I'm gathering again, just using pins. Uh, once again, you can use the fourth of an inch if you wanna be um, a little bit more calculated. If not, just kind of eyeball it. If there's a lot at the end, I'm gonna cut and rip it off. Uh, but I kind of want to get a feel for how much gathering is going on because you got to be able to walk in it at least a little bit. Um, you don't want it super straight or super gathered. It can look a little bulky if you have too much gathering. Um, so I tried to do sleeves. I didn't, I wasn't feeling them, so I took them off, but that's what that looks like right there on my dress form, a little funky thing going on. So you're going to take the front bodice gathered part off and you're going to do a gathering stitch on the top and the bottom. Now, you're going to do two lines of stitching on the top and the bottom. Actually, just for any gathering, always do two stitches. Because if you do one, it's super hard to gather. And if it, the string breaks, you're kind of out of luck. You have to start all over again. So if you're using two, it's so much easier to glide on. You can see how it just, oh, so quickly just gathers. Now, I pinned it front center, and I'm working from the outside in because I need a good um measuring spot uh, because I don't want like the gathering to be heavy on one side or another. I want it to line up on the top and the bottom. So once you finish that, you can put a push pin in halfway, wind your string, and then push it the remaining way through and it'll hold it. Okay, so I, I cut a flat piece of fabric that fits underneath the gathering and I'm top stitching it um, so that it'll hold the gathering in place. Okay, so I pulled the side piece off and I trimmed it up so that I had a nice seam allowance. Now, I'm going to sew it to the side, but first I'm going to um, finish the top of this seam. Because I sewed the gathering to the straight piece in the front, I need to seam, I need to seam, finish the seams on the side pieces. So now I'm going to pin it and I'm going to sew that curve. The curve will help with making the fabric two-dimensional 
taking it from two-dimensional to three-dimensional so it'll fit nicely on your body over your bust. So both pieces are done. Make sure that everything lines up perfectly and take off your straps. You're going to cut the seam allowances and you're going to lay one run on top of the other and make sure that they match because you don't want one strap longer than the other. It's going to make you uh, go crazy if they don't match and, and hang nicely. So right sides together, you're going to sew the long seam. Now I'm not seaming, I'm not finishing the end pieces. I'll finish that after I attach it just to make sure I have um, enough material in case I need to pick it and redo it. So how I turn those inside out is I use a little safety pin, pin it on one side and push it through. And so it'll come outside the other. You should be ironing, pressing flat and then open on all of these seams. I don't show that here. Okay, and then I want you to pin the, the straps to the bodice and make sure that you're not pinning it to the dress form. So you can take it off and you can attach it. So I do my front straps first and then I do the back ones and make sure that the pins don't come out and your straps don't get crooked. You don't wanna to have to pick those out and redo them. So after you attach them to the bodice in the front and the back, I want you to turn the extra straps um, underneath and seam those or finish those seams because you don't want any raw edges, especially in the front. It'll drive you crazy there too. So, um, okay, you have the top bodice done. Next, you're going to take the skirt off and you're going to do a gathering stitch along the top. Make sure you're doing two seams. Now, with this one, I, I just cut the hem roughly because I didn't want to have to work with a ton of fabric. It, it gets a little cumbersome. So I rough cut it um, by the ripping method. So once you have everything gathered, I mean, once you have the gathering stitch done, you're going to pin it front, uh, back center and you're going to start gathering. You can see me gather, gather, gather. You're probably going to gather three fourths of the skirt um, before you uh, put it around the body and pin it center back again. You want to get it to look even. So as I'm going, I'm making sure that my gathering matches. There's not a huge amount of gathering on one side or in the front or the back because then you're just going to look really silly. Um, you want it all to be uniform and matching. You can also um, pin it to the dress form. Um, sometimes there's a gap between my bodice and my skirt, but because I have ripped my seams, I know that when I sew it together, it's going to match. So it's just kind of a visual for me right now. So pull everything off and you are going to finish the seams back center. You can use uh, buttons or hook and eye. I, you can use a zipper if you want, but I tried to stay true to the Georgian era, era and I used hook and eyes. Um, you can use whatever you want. So once the back seams are finished, um, you're going to want to attach the skirt to the bodice. Now pin it on one on both ends um, and you can work across to, from one side to the other, making sure that you are, are even in your gathering. So once that is seamed, um, you pull it off and um, you're going to sew the skirt from the, the, when it attaches to the bodice to the hem. Now I left six inches between... Um, the top of the skirt, at the top of the skirt so that um, I can finish those seams and add a hook and eye because you want to be able to put this over your shoulders or your hips. You don't want to get caught to not being able to put your dress on. Okay, so I did a three inch hem here. Um, later, I went in and shortened that. I felt it looked way too much like a sheet um, and I did not want that. So um, once you're finished with this, then you're done, add your um, hook and eyes or your buttons or your zipper and you are good to go. Make sure you check out the other video of me in this dress and my other two videos of panda makeup and a panda costume. Okay, stay tuned for more videos.